Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric. I make apps. Now today, let's ask the question, can you still get big success with small apps? All right, so today I want to answer a question that came in two weeks ago from Ravi Sharma. Uh, Ravi says, Hey Eric, do you sometimes feel that making apps for clients or for having passive income ad revenue is never going to result in big success and the only apps which actually have the potential to make you rich are those which offer specific business-like service such as LinkedIn for job search, Tinder for partner search, WhatsApp for communication, Facebook for social networks. I feel having created eight different apps with over two million downloads, my apps still don't translate to a lot of money because people just use them for fun and they don't really pay for the fun part of the app. What do you think? Can you talk about it on the live session, please? Uh, this has a, started me uh, making me a little disappointed and thank you for sharing all your thoughts. You inspire me a lot. Robbie, thank you so much for the question and I've been, you know, the reason I didn't talk about this on, on one of the previous live streams is because I think it's such a good question and it's, it's caused me to think a lot too. I mean, one of the things that I found you know, over the last couple of years is the app market, it is getting harder, right? It is getting more and more difficult to do it. The applications that you mentioned there, like Tinder for, for dating, uh, WhatsApp for communication, those are applications that actually improve the lives of, of, of the users of it. So like people are willing to pay for it or willing to download it, willing to use it because it actually makes their lives better. And a lot of the times when I'm looking at other people's applications, and my own included, a lot of them are still thinking of, of the app market as if it's still, what, five or ten years ago where people would just download something because it was just fun. It was just like a prank. A lot, like a lot of prank applications, like download this prank, whatever, right? And the, the app market is getting more and more difficult, but it's also just maturing. Like apps have to be better. The, the, the barrier for entry the barrier for entry is really low, which is why it's crowded, but, but the bar for success is higher because there's so many big players out there doing like really, really good things. Right? When we look at the app market when it started in, I guess, 2008 with the App Store opening up, I can remember reading a book by Chad Moretta called App Empire. And in it, he talked about he just put an app out there, which was like fake fingerprint scan, fool your friends and he talked about how much money he made from it and then a whole bunch of other people went into it and then all these other things go in and you still see a lot of applications like that out there but they they don't really do very well because they're just you know they don't really add any value to the users my own experience was was ear spy which is i talked about on many videos before which was like a simple application which just amplified the hearing so it was just take the microphone put it uh, the uh, microphone, put it straight through the headphones, have a graphical equalizer so that you can put a Bluetooth next to something, your phone next to something and listen through Bluetooth, right? It was very simple to do, but it didn't have a lot of legs to expand and to, to make, so it was like people would download it and my retention was really low, but it still made a good chunk of money back in the day for what it was, right? One of the downsides of it was it was, again, it was simple, it was easy, so it was copied again and again and again because I didn't do like those other applications you you talk about which actually expand and add more and more functionality and actually improve the lives of my users and eventually that went away and now I have a bunch of language learning apps which do uh, they do okay but they definitely need some TLC on my part right I think that the app market is getting harder I think that making ad revenue is getting more and more difficult we had this thing this week where um, was it Facebook took out an ad against Apple because of location services being more tightly controlled in the upcoming platforms? I think advertising just in the last decade has kind of run amok, right? Where advertising is, is fueling so many different economies, but it's also taking away a lot of our privacy. So I think a lot of that's just going to get harder. And as more and more people put stuff out there for ad revenue, the revenue is just going to go more and more down. So we have to create things that people will pay for. And if you're going to do something that people will pay for, it has to be really, really good. And that's why we have to start thinking about rather than something that's just a low barrier to entry where like say five years ago, well, actually, I guess about eight years ago, like when I started out 2012, 2013, I knew a lot of people who just did reskinning. You just go out, you buy some code, you get a designer to reskin it and then you release it. And then hopefully it does well. Although, you know, 
it was just like we had so much junk that just looked the same as each other, right? But it was all about marketing. Can you market your app better than everybody else's, right? And that for a while, that was kind of the thing. And then ASO is a big thing too. Like, okay, you may have an app that's similar to a lot of other people's, but does it show up first in search ranking? And that's still very, very important. You don't want to put all this work into an application and nobody could find it. But ASO alone might not, I mean, that doesn't mean anybody's going to pay. It means they're going to find it and hopefully they're going to download it. But in order to actually make money from it, yeah, you actually have to have something that will improve their lives. And this is one of the things I think about a lot. Some of my clients have this in place where they've had an application where it started off very simple. They were able to get a little bit of an audience and then they keep adding functionality to it as they go. It gets a bit of legs and pretty soon they have this juggernaut of like all this functionality that it's very hard for anybody to to compete with because they would have to go and start at zero. All right, so, uh, and I don't think it should be disappointing. One of the nice things, of, well, one of the great things about the world that we live in right now is that we have Firebase, we have AWS, we have Azure, we have Heroku, we have all these serverless architectures or cloud-based architectures where we could easily create these kind of things for very low cost and get things out there which actually do improve the lives of others, right? But it's finding that unique idea and that unique thing that people are looking for but they haven't found yet. So I kind of, I feel your pain there too, Ravi. Like for me, the ad revenue or sorry, the ad revenue and app revenue in general has just been on a decline uh, for the last, well, for me, for the last couple of years, especially since my big app was removed. But I think, you know, the, the, the bar to entry is still very low, which is why we have the saturated market, right? Which is why it's hard to get in there and get noticed. But the, but the, uh, the bar for success is higher. But I don't think that should discourage us. I think it should make us want to work harder, right? For me, I was always in the case where I'll just have a whole bunch of little apps which make a little bit of money and then that should be okay. Uh, but you know, I think if you want to have real success, you need to find that one big application, and that might be trying a few different things, and then you know, and then working at that. And um, that's that's still my goal. And when you talk about whether or not client work or ad revenue, like I said, ad revenue is going down. Client work. I think everybody out there who does client work should see client work as a means to an end. It's so you can make enough money, so you can build and make enough money. Also build up your skills so that you can be working on your own application because passive income is probably what your clients are looking for anyway with, with their applications. But passive income is, or you know, income while you sleep, income that's not directly related to the time that you spend and the labor. That's really what you want to achieve. At least that's what I really want to achieve. But Ravi, I think it's a really good question. I think it's yeah, things are going to get harder in the future, uh, but I don't think that should discourage us. I think it should be more like. You know, we need to think about. It. We need to think more about what can we do on the server. What can we do that's not so easily imitated and copied, and um, you know, and what and with somewhat unique. Um, easier said than done, obviously. Anyway. Oh, for those of you guys who join our live stream every week, we're not going to do any more live streams for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, it's, it's, well, it's late December, so we're going to start them up next year. I want to change the format somehow. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're not going to have a live stream tonight or for the rest of, uh, for the next few weeks, but we'll be coming back next week. Uh, if you like the channel, please subscribe, like, you know, yada, yada, yada. And that's it for today. I'll talk to you again next time.